Hi everyone, we're now going to look at some practice problems from chapter 12. So we're going to be looking at chap uh, problem 12.5, 12.7, and 12.13. So hopefully you've um, tried this on your own and now we'll look at the answers. So problem 12.5. The following selected transactions relate to investment activities of Ornamental Insulation Corporation during 2021. Company buys debt securities, intending to profit from short-term differences in price and maintain them in an active trading portfolio. Ornamental's fiscal year ends on December 31st and no investments were held by Ornamental as of December 31st, 2020. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is when we start purchasing these securities is what are they buying, debt or equity? And then what category should they be put in? If they're debt, trading, available for sale or held to maturity. If they're equity, what percentage of the company do we own? If it's less than 20, it's fair value. So we'll be using um, the rules more of trading investments to account for those and reporting them at fair value. If we own between 20 and 50%, we generally use the equity method. So on March 31st, the company acquired an 8% distribution transfers corporation bonds costing 400,000 at face value. So we will debit the investment in bonds, 400,000 in credit cash. Sorry, I never answered our questions, did I? It tells us right in the problem that any debt securities that are purchased are for the short term. They're gonna sell them quickly. So these are all considered trading investments. September 1st, they acquired 900,000 of American Instruments, 10% bonds at face value. So debit the investment in bonds, 900,000 credit cash. September 30th, the company received an interest payment on the distribution transformer bonds. So they will debit cash for the amount of the interest. They don't tell us the amount, we need to determine it. So we'll take the face value of the bond, 400,000 times 8%, that's for an entire year. We're only gonna receive interest for six months, so six twelfths or $16,000. Credit the interest revenue for $16,000. Do, 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 do. Okay, sold, sold the distribution um, transformer bond for 425,000. And that occurred, something's wrong here. Let me stop and, sorry about that. I, um, wanted to check something. So the first thing we have to do is write the bond up or down to fair value. So what it's sold for. So the bond is has a value of 425,000 when it's sold. So we need to make sure that fair value adjustment account has a $25,000 debit balance in it the day that this is sold. So how do we achieve that? Well, we debit the fair value adjustment account for the 25,000 because there was no balance in the fair value adjustment account. If there was, we would have had to take that into account when determining the dollar amount in our journal entry. Then we would credit gain on investments for 25000 And you could see the note there. Then we could record the journal entry to debit cash, credit the investment in bonds for the original cost, and then credit the fair value adjustment account. Now, some people might be saying, why don't we just debit the, um, why don't we just credit the gain on investments for this type of transaction? Well, we could in this situation because there was no balance in the fair value adjustment account. 
remember that's the account that writes the um, security up or down to its fair value because the amount in the asset account is the cost. But what if there was a balance? So that's why we have to do this two-step process when we sell a trading investment or an available for sale. On November 1st, the company purchased 1.4 million in an additional bond, M&D, debit cash, or I'm sorry, debit investment in bonds for the 1.4 million in credit cash. Now there's no other transactions, but at December 31st, remember this is a trading security. So we need to determine what is the market value of these securities on December 31st and make sure they're reported at that amount in the balance sheet. So first thing we'll do is compare what they're in the actual T account for, the investment account, and that would be cost, the 1.4 million that they paid for M&D and the 900,000 American Instrument Bond. What are they selling for? Well, 1.1 million 460,000 and 850,000. So the difference between the two is $10,000. Now, we'll come back to the adjusting entries that are required as well, but for purpose, pur purposes of determining the value that needs to be on the balance sheet for these investments, well, what is the balance in our fair value adjustment account? Well, there was no balance. We need the balance in that account to be $10,000 because whatever the balance is in the fair value account is either added if it's a debit balance or subtracted if it's a credit balance to the investment account, which is where we house the cost. So since we wanna add 10,000, we will need to debit our fair value adjustment account 10,000 and credit gain on investments, remembering that this goes in net income. It's actually reported in the other area, other revenues and gains. Now that's one very important step because we have to report investments in the trading category at their fair market value. So when we put the investment balance on the balance sheet, we will take 2.3 million plus the fair value adjustment account, 2,310,000. Also, they remind us, don't forget to accrue interest on the bonds that are outstanding. So did we receive any interest yet from the bond that we purchased on September 1st? No, but we've owned it for four months. So four months of interest have accrued on this bond and should be recognized as revenue. So take the principal of 900,000 times the 10% interest rate times four over 12 or four months of interest. $30,000. So debit the interest receivable for $30,000, credit the interest revenue. You'll do the same computation for the M&D bond. Remember, when you have bonds, when you purchase bonds as an investment, you are giving a corporation money, but loaning it. The corporation promises to pay you while you own the bond, interest on that bond, and then finally the principal when it matures. So that's why we're accruing this interest. 1.4 million is the principal of the bond times 6% interest rate, but we only owned it for two months, so two twelfths. And that's how we determine that second journal entries dollar amounts. So those are the journal entries. In the second part, they want us to indicate any amounts that ornamental insulation would report in its 2021 income statement, 2021 statement of comprehensive income, and the 1231-2021 balance sheet because of these investments include totals of net income, comprehensive income, and retained earnings as a result of these investments. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the income statement, they will report the three interest revenues. They will report the two gains on investments because 
difference in fair value adjustments, gain or losses because fair value changes on a trading investment is reported on the income statement. Statement of comprehensive income, the only impact is net income. There are no other adjustments due to these investments. Then in the balance sheet, you'll have interest receivable for those two interests that were accrued at the end of the year. Then you see what I was saying about investments in bonds. That's how much we paid for them, but then add the fair value adjustment to increase it to its current market value. And then the increase in retained earnings would be 95,000 from these transactions because that's the impact on net income. Okay, so looking at investments in bonds that are classified as trading. We're now going to move to page 706, problem 12-7. We're going to use some of the same information here that we did in 12-5, except the company buys equity securities as non-current investments. So now we're kind of switching up and adding some these different transactions, not as bonds they're purchasing, but as common stock. None of Ornamental's investments are large enough to exert significant influence on the investee. What does that mean? Well, they will be accounted for in that zero to 20% category, meaning they will be listed on the balance sheet at fair value. They're also going to be considered non-current or long-term investments because they're not going to sell them quickly. No investments were held as of December 31st, 2020. So let's see how this changes when instead of investing in a bond, we're investing in stock. And I will get there. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is appropriate journal entries for each event. So now they're going to acquire distribution transformer corporation common stock for 400,000. Now we still debit an asset, but now it's called investment in equity securities, or you could put investment in stock transformer corp. Just as long as you're debiting an asset, credit cash. Same with the September 1st, debit investment in equity securities, credit cash, for the purchase of American Instrument common stock, 900,000. Now, when you invest in stock, you don't receive interest from the corporation. You receive a dividend because you're the owner. Under this type of investment, you debit cash and credit dividend revenue because you do not exercise significant influence. Just like before, when we sell the stock, the first thing we want to do is increase or decrease our fair value adjustment account at the date of sale so that it causes that stock to be at fair value. When you take the investment plus the fair value adjustment account, it will be at fair value. So there was no balance in our fair value adjustment account. We need it to be at 25,000, so we're gonna debit the fair value adjustment account, credit the gain on investments, which again are reported in the income statement. So NI, they increase net income. Then we'll show the sale of the stock. Debiting cash for the 425,000 they sold it for, crediting the investment account for the cost of the security, then crediting the fair value adjustment account for the $25,000 we just had to increase it to. November 1st, they purchase another investment for 1.4 in M&D, excuse me, stock. So that also goes into the investment in equity securities credit cash. There are no adjusting journal entries related to equity investments. There, there is though for an equity investment that is not significant ownership, a requirement to report that stock or that category of equity investments at fair market value, just like we did when the bond is listed as a trading or available for sale category. So you're gonna again, write each stock and what you paid for it, then the fair value and determine overall if the cost compared to the fair value um, 
has been increased or decreased. In this case, it increased. So we need the fair value adjustment account to have a $10,000 balance in it because again, the balance in that account is added or subtracted to the investment account, which houses the cost of the investments. So we need our investment account of 2.3 million to be reported on the balance sheet at 2.310. So we will debit the fair value adjustment account for 10,000 and credit gain on investments. And we do a lot of similar accounting for different categories or types of investments. Then when we report the information on our income statement, dividend revenue will be 16,000. We'll have our gain on investments of 10,000 and our gain on investments of 25,000 from the sale. So net income is increased or positive 51,000. That's the only effect on statement of comprehensive income in this category of investment. Then we have the balance sheet. The cost of the investments were 2.3 million. The fair value adjustment account has a balance of 10,000. So we'll report them at 2,310,000, their fair value. Retained earnings will increase because of the net income of 51,000. So that was nice to see um, that from 12.5 from a stock perspective. Okay, so the final problem we're going to review is problem 1213 on page 708. Northwest Paper Board Company, a paper and allied products manufacturer, was seeking to gain a foothold in Canada. Toward that end, the company bought 40%, oh boy, there we go, above 20% ownership of the common stock of Vancouver Timber for $400 million. At the date of the purchase, the book value of Vancouver's net assets was $775 million. The book and fair values for all balance sheet items were the same except for inventory and plant facilities. The fair value exceeded book value by $5 million for inventory and $20 million for the plant facilities. The estimated useful life of the plant facilities is 16 years. All inventory acquired during 2021 was sold. Vancouver, the company that was purchased, also reported net income of $140 million for 2021 and paid a cash dividend of $30 million. So we need to prepare all appropriate journal entries related to the investment during 2021. This is a nice problem. And you'll use this in a future class, advanced accounting, so you know. <laughs> So 1213, there we go. So the first thing we wanna do is record the purchase of the investment. So we're gonna debit the investment in equity affiliate. Now equity affiliate means we're now mm, just not an investment, just not, you know, our, well, we're playing the stock market. Now we own a significant part of the company. We have significant influence, credit cash. We're going to take 40% of Vancouver's income and record that as revenue on the books of Northwest. So under the equity method, when you have significant influence, we don't wait until we get a dividend to show revenue as the investor. We show the revenue on our books as the company we invested in actually earns it because we do have significant influence and we are creating those earnings. We debit the investment account for that 40% of the net income of um, timber, Vancouver timber, and credit investment revenue. So Northwest will have additional revenue of 56 million. The dividends, 30% of the, I'm sorry, 40% of the 30 million Northwest will receive in cash and they credit the investment account. Now, some other things that need to happen. <laughs> An inventory adjustment must be made because the fair value 
exceeds the book value of the inventory by five million and all of it was sold, okay, five million of the 40% actually decreases the investment revenue. And we credit the investment in equity affiliate. Okay. And it's just because of when they purchased that difference in value. Also, there will be a depreciation, additional depreciation um, item. And here, here's the deal with that. So, you know, the fair value exceeded the book value by five million. Okay. So it's decreased because when they bought it, the fair value was higher. Okay, but in the depreciation entry, the de investment revenue also decreases. Why? Well, if the company, oh, I'm sorry, here's what it is. If the company did have the assets at their fair value, there would have been an additional amount of depreciation related to that $20 million. But because the company didn't have that listed and Northwest purchased them when there was value of 20 million more, Northwest will record that depreciation as a reduction to their investment revenue. So the fair value of that difference is 20 million. The difference between book value and fair value at purchase. 40% of it should be attributed to Northwest. So that 40% of 20 million, 8 million should be allocated over 16 years, decreasing the investment revenue on Northwest books and decreasing the investment account. So essentially what Northwest is doing is showing the effects due to the fair value book value difference on their books due to this purchase. It doesn't affect Vancouver Timber and Milling, but because the, uh, Northwest purchased them when the fair values were higher, these items should have been recorded on Vancouver Timber's in Northwest's pers uh, eyes or perspective, but because they weren't, now Northwest will record them in their accounting information. So here's what we do. The company, fair value. So the fair value of the company is 800. What does that mean? Well, we said its book value is 775. And we said two assets were, were, um, had a higher fair value. So the true fair value of the assets is 800 when Northwest bought them. They bought 40% of the company. So they bought 320 in fair value. Now they paid for 100. The difference is goodwill. Okay, so the company paid more for, Van I'm sorry, Northwest paid more for Vancouver than its fair value. So that difference is goodwill to Northwest. We don't do anything with goodwill. We don't amortize it. We don't expense it or anything like that. But how about this inventory? Inventory is undervalued by 5 million. It actually has a fair value of 5 million more. Okay, and because there's an undervaluation of inventory that decreases um, revenue by 2 million and also the assets. The same with the plant facilities. They're undervalued by 8 million, but we can't write that all off this year. We have to write it off over 16 years, that undervaluing. So it's really accounting for that difference in fair value and book value at the date of the sale. 
So here's what happens in the accounts. The investment revenue will increase for the share of net income they receive from um, the income of Vancouver. But then it'll decrease because those two items were undervalued on the books of v Vancouver when they bought it. So the amount of investment revenue they'll have to show on their books, Northwest, is $53.5 million. Their asset account will show the cost of the investment. It'll increase for their share of Vancouver's actual net income, but decrease because of the inventory and depreciation under valuation. And it'll also decrease because they received a dividend. So this stuff is really important going into advanced accounting in a further, um, in while you're pursuing a bachelor's degree. But that's how you could see it in the T accounts. The final requirement wants to know, what should Northwest report in its statement of cash flow regarding its investment? Well, it's going to show a 400 million cash outflow in investing activities to purchase the investment, a 12 million cash inflow in operating activities for dividends received. Okay, and then it goes on to talk about the indirect method. So that's a nice little catch all there. So you could see the impact on these various financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flow. Statement of cash flow, we only worry about when cash is involved. Okay, so please, any kind of questions you may have on purchasing a debt um, and what category to put it in, purchasing an equity security um, and um, doing the accounting work related to if it's less than, if it's not significant influence or significant influence, please be sure you ask any and all questions. There's a lot of categories here and a lot to learn. And we went over a few of the items and you could please post them to your discussion board.